everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather and today I'll be doing part two of my Georgian and Regency set fiction and non-fiction videos. So you will have seen my fiction book recommendations already, so today I am here to tell you about some non-fiction that I have enjoyed. Again, I have a separate video all about Jane Austen's specific non-fiction, which you can find in my Jane Austen playlist, but these are other non-fiction books about other important figures and moments in Georgian and Regency history that you might be intrigued to know a little bit more about. I have a lot of biographies in here, so I will start with the three books that are not biographies, not specifically biographies anyway. And the first book is The Lady in Red by Hallie Rubenhold. I believe in some countries you may also see this book as The Scandalous Lady W. And this chronicles a court case involving Lady Worsley in 1782. So all of Georgian society would have known about this case. And it is fascinating. Lady Worsley and Lord Worsley had been married for a number of years. However, as it turns out, Lord Worsley was a voyeur and had been essentially pimping his wife out to all of his friends. Lady Worsley was not entirely happy with this arrangement and surprise, she fell in love with one of them and they decided to run away together. So the court case became splashed about in all the newspapers when Lord Worsley tried to sue his friend for damages to his property, i.e. his wife. That's horrible and intriguing enough right there, but the way that that court case ended is even more fascinating. And if you've read and loved The Five by Hallie Rubenhold, I definitely recommend this one as well. Next is a book that is half biography and half fashion guide, and that is Queen of Fashion, What Marie Antoinette Wore to the Revolution by Caroline Weber. Yes, I realize this isn't strictly speaking Regency, but Marie Antoinette was a prominent figure during the era in which Jane Austen lived and was writing, and indeed she had a huge influence on fashion on both sides of the channel. And this book looks at specifically the fashion choices that Marie Antoinette made that became popular and the reasons why they became popular and how you could look at them as political statements and therefore how they shaped the outcome of the French Revolution. This was a really fascinating read and I would highly recommend it. And thirdly, a book that falls a little bit later than The Regency, but only just a little bit, is The Secret Diaries of Miss Anne Lister. These are her literal diaries that have been edited and translated by Helena Whitbread, and I count these as sort of Regency as this set of diaries in the first book starts in 1816, which was still Regency, so ha! I cannot stop going on about Anne Lister. She is a fascinating figure. She lived from 1791 to 1840 and was a pioneer for both women and the LGBTQ plus community during that time. She was as openly gay as she could be at that time. It was never specifically said, but lots of people in the neighborhood basically knew. She defied fashion choices and gender stereotypes and carved out a really incredible life for herself. She was self-educated in multiple languages, including ancient languages, which women were not usually taught. She was an entrepreneur and a businesswoman. She is truly incredible and inspirational. And if you enjoyed the series Gentleman Jack on the BBC or HBO, then I would highly recommend that you read her actual diaries. And now we move on to the biographies themselves. The first one that I would recommend is Belle by Paula Byrne. This is an incredible film, and if you have not read the biography that accompanies it, I would highly recommend it. Paula Byrne has written some amazing books, especially about Jane Austen, 
but this biography is also incredible. It is the story of Dido Bell, who was the illegitimate daughter of an African slave woman and a captain in the Royal Navy, who was left to be raised by her great uncle, the Earl of Mansfield. You may have seen this painting from time to time as typical of the Georgian and Regency era. And it was a huge step at the time because it was the first painting to show a black woman and a white woman as almost equals. And this painting is of Elizabeth Mansfield and her cousin, Dido Bell. It was an incredible film and an equally incredible biography. Also by Paula Byrne, I would recommend Perdita, a biography of Mary Robinson, who was a very prominent actress and writer during the Regency period. I had heard Mary Robinson's name referenced quite a lot when reading other Regency and Georgian nonfiction, but I had never been entirely sure who she was apart from a fine actress. The things Mary Robinson went through are incredible, and the people that she knew and had relationships with is an incredible list. She was connected to so many high profile people, including being mistress of the Prince Regent for a very long time. And yet no one ever talked about her achievements until Paula Byrne wrote this biography. If you enjoyed the film The Duchess, I would recommend reading Georgina, Duchess of Devonshire by Amanda Foreman, which is the biography upon which that film was based. Georgina, Duchess of Devonshire is also an incredible figure in Regency history. If you read any other book about Regency history, you will hear about Georgina at some point. So knowing the full details of her life, including all of the dark and sad ones, of which there were a lot, is hugely, hugely important. I would also recommend the biography Amazing Grace by Eric Metaxas, which is the story of William Wilberforce, who is credited with leading the charge in England to abolish the slave trade. There is also a fantastic film, Amazing Grace, which chronicles his life. And indeed, that was based on this biography. He was a fascinating man and the way in which they had to go about abolishing the slave trade in a way that no one would notice, which the fact that they even had to think like that is incredible. But it's incredibly intriguing as well as his lead up to the abolition is pretty incredible. He also lived with chronic illness. He probably had ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease or something along those lines which of course they knew very little about, so it was very difficult to treat, but he still came through and made incredible political waves. I would also recommend Romantic Outlaws, which is a dual biography of Mary Wollstonecraft and Mary Shelley, both major figures within the Georgian and Regency periods, but they were also mother and daughter. And I love the way that this book is laid out you have one chapter about Mary Wollstonecraft's life. The next chapter will be about that same period in Mary Shelley's life, and you will be able to compare their childhoods all the way through their adulthoods as you go along. And the amount of similarities between both of their lives, considering that they barely knew one another, Mary Wollstonecraft died shortly after giving birth to Mary Shelley, is truly amazing. It is a monster of a book, but don't let that stop you. It is really fascinating. Finally, I have two Georgian and Regency adjacent books, as these are not people who lived in the UK itself, but nonetheless are hugely important in the history of the time, certainly in the Western world. And those are Marie Antoinette by Antonia Fraser. Antonia Fraser is an incredible historian and yes, apparently the film Marie Antoinette with Kirsten Dunst was based on this book. However, if you didn't enjoy that film, don't let it put you off. The biography is incredibly detailed and serious and really gives you great insight into everything that Marie Antoinette went through in her life, as well as how we arrived at the tipping point that was the French Revolution. Another prominent figure during that time was, of course, 
Alexander Hamilton, so I would recommend the other monster biography by Ron Chernow, upon which the musical Hamilton was based. It is also super detailed and fantastic, and you can definitely see how it inspired Lin-Manuel Miranda to create the musical in the first place. And of course, Hamilton lived and indeed died between the Georgian and Regency eras. And indeed, this half counts because until America's independence, they too were living under King George, so it could still be called the Georgian era. So there you have it. Those are some other Georgency and Regency set nonfiction books that I have enjoyed. Let me know down below if you have any more that you would recommend to me. And until next time, be safe, be well, and happy reading. Bye everyone.